everyone. I'm Varsha. So I'm founder of Empower Studio, a mother and a very proud army wife. But before any of my professional or personal role, I am a human on this planet who has taken a lot of its resources to stand where I am today. So here, I am here to talk to you about something that we can always give back to the nature, to the planet, whom we owe everything. So before we start here today, I know what you did last summers. Rather, we all know what we experienced in the summers of 2022. What I witnessed, what I say as the worst summers of my life, I'm scared that my son might be saying he witnessed the best summers of his life. Because the depreciating graphs are clear enough to show us that the worst is yet to come. But where we have reached today is not just one mistake that we have done. It is just what we have done, the privileges that we have enjoyed in the last few decades. That is where we have gone wrong. It has cost us our future. People say we don't realize things till we become mother. And clearly it was the case in mine. When I actually started thinking of from the point of view as a mother, when I thought, what is my son going to witness in another two decades? It actually shook me. You know what? When the plastic was invented approximately 60, uh, six decades back, it's a very, very good invention. It's not a bad invention at all. It has helped mankind in more than one ways. It has truly been a very, very helpful material in the uh, medical field and many other fields. But where we went wrong was when we actually misused it. We misused it to an extent that currently the world's 91% of the production, plastic production, is actually single use. Now, this is scary. Production of plastic probably may not be. But 91% of it being single-use plastic is something that is concerning and something that is avoidable. I have even more scary figure with you to share, and that is the production of the single-use plastic is going to double up in the next two decades. As an entrepreneur, I am a person of numbers. I really care about what the demand is and how can I supply it in the market. And that's what the entire industry cares about. So where does the onus lies for the another 20 years when the production is actually going to double up? It lies in the demand. And where does the demand start? The demand definitely starts with us as consumers. When we go out, shop in the market, Whenever you buy something, it's nothing. It's just placing a demand. So when you shop, when you go out, when you, whenever you look for something in the market, you are actually placing a demand somewhere. And that is what is triggering in the manufacturing. Manufacturers will never produce when you don't need things. We have become so dependent on certain things that it has been produced and it will keep getting produced. We cannot stop them until and unless the consumption is regulated at some stage. But why should we care? I'll tell you my story and how it started for me. So I'll just show you one small picture. Now, in the last 24 hours, how many of you have used this or maybe have it in your house or at your desk? See, we all do. This is as simple as a pen. We don't care when we bought. Do you even remember when you bought that? Generally, we don't. When was the last time we went out looking for a refill? Or do we have any, yes, do we have any uh, fountain pen, pen users here? That's, that's wonderful. For the particular day, yes. 
See, this was one play, this was one my trigger point when I started in 2020. As I told you, I am a mother and mothers clean. So I was cleaning with my son. We were cleaning the desk. And to my surprise, for the first time I noticed, I have about 50 pence, which I don't remember when did I buy, which I clearly don't remember what I'm going to do with. And that was triggering for me. I actually thought about it whole night. Oh, how do I actually go out and buy pens? I just picked the whole packet. Now my buying behavior has definitely evolved. I don't even go and buy one five rupee pen. I just picked the whole packet and I don't care where did I lose it. It was all there in my desk. There's so much of single use plastic that I had in my desk four years back. And that's what made me think, he, can I do something to let, it, let my son avoid it? Can I bring out something which can help him avoid having this cluster at his place? So that is where I started. We can do some simple maths. We are about 50 of us standing here, sitting here, and probably 500 on the campus. If each one of us owes just five of these, Imagine the single-use plastic we are buying without even thinking. And this is what is happening throughout. This was just an example which triggered me. And I'm sure there, there must be many around which we are not even noticing. So this is one thing. This is what we hold. Now, where can we change that? When we go out looking for something in the market, as I said before, that's the demand. So think consciously how I can, how can I place before I begin selling anything as in my venture or before I started looking out for the opportunities, how I can look for something which is you know, eco-friendly, which, which is harming the nature a little less. How can I be useful to you know, the planet what, where I'm standing, the water, the land, everything I'm using from this planet. But before everything, I am a consumer myself. I am somebody who's going out shopping on a very, very regular basis. So that is where I play a role. And that's what I understood a few years back. And I really hope by end of today's conversation, the whole day's conversation, it is just this much difference that some of us has taken their first step. And by end of it, I really hope that few more of you would be initiated to take their first step at least. And this is just about the first step and nothing more. It is not about the two rupees extra that we are paying. It's about being aware when we are buying something, what is it triggering back to nature? Even if it is as small as going and buying a garment, why? And what is it triggering back as a demand? There are a lot of numbers. There's a whole lot of studies, MBAs being done on this particular topic that's demand and supply. It is not as easy. But if you look from your perspective as a consumer, it is very, very easy. We go, we generate demand. And it is not something that you say, oh, my one purchase, my one looking out for an eco-friendly option. How can that trigger a demand? Well, I'll give you a very small example from my life story. I, as I said, I'm an army wife, so I have traveled across the country, lived in very small cities. So I was living in Pathan Court. That's a very small town. And I was an assistant professor in a college, a fashion college. So we were looking out, so I gave a task to my student. They said, ma'am, we will never get it in Pathan Court. We will never, ever get it. I said, go ask for it. So there were about 12 of them. I said, go ask for it. At least place your demand in the local. And they did that. So they placed the demand of something unreasonable in a tier three city of India. And it did not surprise me. After a week, they actually got that. And that's how demand and supply work. If you go out looking for something, it will follow. It will replace other things in this world. 
So when we talked about the doubling of the production of single-use plastic, now what has been done is not in our hands. Now that is something we have to take care as a human being, how efficiently we can use our knowledge to make something recycled and how we can tackle that. But what is coming up is the conscious shopping that can change. When you go out looking for anything, that is one single word that will change. There are few words that can help you remember your purpose, or when I say re continuous shopping, consciously shopping. One very important word is recycle. Looks familiar, but we, do we care? Most of the time we don't know because we are not aware. So I'll give you example from my field, since I've been working on stationaries for a long time, Indian handicrafts and uh, stationery. So when we make recycled papers, right, we use 50% less resources from the nature. A virgin pulp, when you manufacture something from a virgin pulp, paper pulp, it takes about 83,000 liters of water per ton of paper that you produce. Since we are standing in an educational institute, I believe using of diaries and papers is something that we all have been doing, right? We all must have a paper right here with us. So when I said conscious, it means the virgin pulp paper effectively uses 83,000 liters of water, and a recycled paper uses 40,000 liters of water, saving 50%. It is not just that, the paper is absolutely recyclable up to five times, which in journal we are not even aware of. I was not till I started working on it. I was not till I actually updated myself to the knowledge, oh yes, this can be done. How can it reach millions? What are the other trigger points that people care about when they go out buying something? But yes, this is something, this is a knowledge which is easily available on Google or anywhere else. It's up to us how we use that. So I tried using it in terms of building my venture. Probably as a consumer, I feel this is something because internet is so easily accessible to us right now. We Google each and everything. So when you probably read about certain names on the speaker list today, most of you would have Googled or you know looked for it. So why can't we look for what is consciously making an effort? You're placing a demand. It's like placing a demand in a restaurant. We do look at the whole menu. So when we are placing a demand for something to be manufactured, why can't we look at the whole menu, what is there on the platter? Maybe there is something, probably two rupees extra, but it is helping you contribute to a bigger cause. I think it is worth much more than that. So recycle being one of the very important term, a lot of work has been done in India. A lot of work is continuously being done in India to develop a recycled products. It's up to us as conscious shoppers how much effort we take to know about them and to actually create a demand for them in the market. It is not just about one aspect, it lies in every single aspect that we are going out and buying. Regularly, we are spending money. So let's spend it, let's make it worth each and every penny that is going. Okay, the second word that we go out is looking for, is reusable. As simple as carrying your own water bottle. As simple as that. Reusable. It's something which is not new to us. The world is selling the concept of sustainability. Oh, we don't need to learn anything. We have been brought up in an Indian household when my mom used, reused the Vanaspati Dabba. That was reusability. When I grew, oh, it's not aesthetically pleasing, I'll go out buy something else. That was not sustainability. Now, 30 years down the line, I'm again going back to what my mom used to do. So we really don't need to look anywhere else. My mom used to fill up my water bottle when I used to go to school. It's good time that I do it for my son. It's good time that we all go back to what we learned as a very basic of existence. Stitching back the cloth. 
I really, now the youngsters, a lot of my siblings, see, I know because I'm from a fashion college, a lot of my siblings doesn't even know how to stitch back their buttons. Probably, oh, it is torn, I'll buy new, we are the generation of Zara. Yes, I love Zara, but that's not something fast fashion has changed our consumerism, but now it's time to go back and think again, what am I doing? Is it somewhere reusable? Is it something that we can always give back to nature? Reusability is not a fading trend. It's gonna stay, and if this doesn't stay, we will not nowhere be seen. Because we cannot work on use and throw forever. That was a fad. We call some things are fad, some things are classic. This is classic, that's fad. Fad, something gonna come up, come down. Something else is gonna replace that. But this is classic. It's our ethics, it's our basics that we learned. Upcycled. Something that where, you know, where we are changing what has been done. What is already being used, we are upcycling. So that's another keyword that is to be looked out when you're consciously shopping somewhere, right? It is always about us, simply about us, the demand, the supply. I would like to conclude my entire talk saying, it's our onus to go out looking for the products that are helpful to the nature. It could be any aspect, it could be anything. Look from where your products are coming and from where, and where they, are being, they are going. And that will create the difference because a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change this world. We can never doubt this statement. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. I have read this statement somewhere and it has shook me because this is the only thing that has ever changed the world. A small group of people who made certain decisions and inspired many to take theirs. So that's all from me today. Thank you so much for having me here.